Is The Rock ready for my challenge? Or is he still off fighting giant monsters? Or chasing people into the water? Or is that next G.I. Joe movie being filmed yet? Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time to kick Pretender Month off. We're going to take a look at one of the rarer Pretenders to find. This is one of the small Pretenders. The Generation 1 Decepticon Enforcer Stranglehold. Now, Stranglehold was released in 1989. He would be one of the last Pretender toys to be made. And he would be discontinued in 1990, and we would not get a replacement for him. Stranglehold is done up as a strange-looking wrestling character, who apparently also, according to the More Than Meets the Eye guidebooks, was also working as a bouncer in various places. So, as you can imagine, he is one tough dude. But of course, with most, th most things that fans like to do about this character, especially those on the Transformer Wikia, they seem to comment that there is a slight resemblance between the Stranglehold figure shell's face to that of actor Burt Reynolds. I don't know, folks, do you see it here? Yeah, maybe there is a little. Let's see. Lose the helmet. Well, it's not a fair comparison, but... Somewhat close. Maybe we'll see if we can find something a little bit better to make that comparison. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this as a comparison. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it is there. Interesting choice. Don't know why they would go with that route, but anywho, let's let's get the shell out of the way for a moment. And we'll take a look at Stranglehold himself. This is the small figure. Not much to look at, pretender guy wise, but he's a somewhat of an improvement over the larger pretenders. The problem with the original large pretender figures was that their alternate modes really didn't offer a lot of variety and their transformations were very very pathetic. Stranglehold and his five comrades all became uniquely different things so that kinda helped them make them pretty popular on the toy shelves and makes them very difficult to find in today's market. Taking a look at his articulation, you can rotate his arms all the way around and you can bend him here at the knees. And he's just almost balanced just right. Although I imagine if we take that gun out of his hand he's gonna do a face plant not a recommended wrestling move. Ah, each leg is independent as well. Take a look at that, folks. The legs are independent of each other. It's been so long since I've had him out. I do apologize for that. But there you go. Now, let's transform Stranglehold. First by getting taking the gun out. Give me that gun. And we start by we'll fold the animal head up and over his head. We'll fold the arms back so they become the front legs. We'll take his regular legs and fold them up under. And then rotate the animal legs so they're pointing straight down. And then next, to finish him off, we'll remove the arm plate from the shell and connect it into the hole here, if it'll go down some, there we go, put a little pressure on it, and there you have it, 
his alternate mode. Which is basically some form of Cybertronian rhinoceros. Well, if he insists, I think Headstrong, the Predacon, is considerably more convincing as a rhinoceros than this guy is. Eh, whatevs. It's still different. Not a lot of the others became animals, so credit where it's due. Okay, since he's a pretender, the next thing we need to do is get him inside the shell. Now, of course, he needs to be in robot mode, and he can't be holding his gun. You're going to swing his legs in halfway, just like that. And rotate the legs so they point up just about like that. So you want to make sure they're somewhat vertical. And, of course, keep his arms down a bit. Now he fits inside into the back end of the shell. I had to wiggle the legs a little bit to get him in just exactly right. Now there's an added bonus here. There's a little hole here inside the right thigh that just happens to fit the post of his little tiny gun so you can store his gun inside the shell. It's a very nifty and very unique feature for these little pretenders. This was very, very well thought out. Then you just attach the shell and snap it closed and tight. Then finally outfit the shell with the larger gun. Don't split apart on me here. Put the helmet on his head. And then mount this other piece onto his arm. And there you go. Stranglehold is now in disguise as some sort of wrestler or barbarian or something. The only downside to this is that the articulation is just like on the larger pretenders. It's only in the arms, folks. That's all you can do. Bring his arms around. But, at least he can point the gun right. We haven't had to do this for a while, but let's take a look at his loose parts real quick. Starting with the two pieces of the shell. This is the front half of the shell. Get a look at the inside of it. And of course, you now also have the back side of the shell. Nice large mechanical backpack of some sort. And you can get a closer look at that spot in the leg to hold the gun. Like I said, all six of the small pretenders feature something like this. They can hold the small gun inside it. So this is perfect storage. He can hold all his accessories. Speaking of the small gun, this is it right here. It's an orange to match Stranglehold himself. It is a concussion blaster. Kind of nifty. We also have his helmet. Not much going for it. Kind of hearkening to a Centurion or Gladiator helmet. But otherwise, nothing real fancy about it. And you have what they label as the Rhino Top slash Backpack. Despite the fact that this thing fits on his arm, so shouldn't it be an arm pack? Kind of weird there, folks. All it's got on the back is just the one post. Got to be careful with how you put it in because it can stress. So do be careful. 
And of course, watch out for this little tail piece. It is also very thin, so it can stress. And lastly, we have the large gun, what they refer to as the brawn blaster. Now, if you added a Y to it, I would guess it shoots paper towels. Yeah. There's been worse things named. Okay, folks. Moving right along now, we have here his card backer. As you can see, it is quite large. What's even more impressive is that those things are very difficult to find. We'll turn it around here to the back side, and you can see primarily highlights the humanoid shell. And shows off all the loose parts. And then, of course, the attack robot. And then we start transforming him. Looks like I forgot you could have mounted the gun onto his back, onto the rhino back, so he'd be an attack rhinoceros. Silly as that sounds. And then how to hide him into his pretender shell. Now, I show you inserting the gun in here, but they do not mention it in the instructions. I'm guessing there's no room for it, but still, somebody may not notice that. And then finish him off. And right here you can see all of them. Double header, bludgeon, pincher, long tooth, octopunch, and stranglehold. I've gotten all six of these guys. These guys are pretty difficult to find, and they are very costly. But I only have this one's card backer. I have a foreign one for double header, but I need an English one to review him. Then, of course, down here we got barcode and a robot point. Despite being this big, he was only worth one point. Now we get right over here to his tech spec and the picture which would match the one here somewhat on the front of the package. It shows off all three things, the shell, the robot, and the alternate mode. It's got purple highlights and a purple top to indicate he's a Decepticon. It gives his name as Stranglehold, and his function is Enforcer. His motto is, Rule 1 is, There are no rules. Does that mean then that rule number 2 is, You don't talk about Fight Club? Then he skips having a rule three and four and then says something stupid as rule number five. A muscle-bound monster willing to do anything to win kicks, gouges, and sucker punches his way to victory. The reigning intergalactic Cybertronic Wrestling Federation champ. A powerhouse of brute strength. All brawn and no brains. Enjoys bench-pressing houses and arm-curling cars to stay in shape. Sends his opponents down for the count with his steel-smashing ultra-suplex or a short-circuiting atomic pile driver. And one thing to notice here is that atomic is misspelled. Armed with brawn blaster that drains his enemy's power. Equipped with Concussion Blaster in Robot Mode. This just gets sillier the further we go, folks. Taking a look now at his stats. We give his Strength is 9. His Intelligence is 3. His Speed is 2. His Endurance is 9. His Rank is 7. His Courage is 5. His Firepower is 6. And his Skill is 8. So he's got the strength to definitely back up being an enforcer and no brains, like the bio said, but I'm concerned with his average courage, you know. Somebody with all that bravado obviously can be intimidated to some degree. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of him? That tech spec is ridiculous, folks. I'm not a fan of wrestling. I don't even understand wrestling. And I'm not going to try to at this point in my life. I have a hard enough time trying to understand these toys. 
But all kidding aside on the idea of merging the Transformer world with wrestling, I think Stranglehold is an improvement over many of the regular pretenders that were in the larger shells. He doesn't ha seem to have emotional issues holding him back, and there's nothing to indicate that the shell has anything fancy going on with it. So at least he gets some points for originality, which helps to offset that terrible tech spec bio. I mean, that was written more for laughs than anything else. Who could take a character like that seriously? But, on another interesting fact, with the fact that he becomes a rhinoceros, that's a nice, different change. We haven't really had many animals in the Transformer world, and the, the only other rhinoceros that he'd have to share it with is the Predacon Headstrong. But by 1989, Headstrong was no longer available on the market, so Stranglehold here would make a decent substitute for him. Unless, of course, you're trying to build Predaking, then in that case, you better seek out Headstrong. All in all, despite all the goofiness, the silliness of the shell, and the ridiculous tech spec, I'm going to put Stranglehold in the middle tier. He's certainly too ridiculous to fit in the top tier, but he does have some good points that make him worth being in the middle tier. You've got somebody that's super strong and isn't afraid to use his brute strength, and maybe some of his flashy moves to get through the enemy ranks. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Decepticon Enforcer Stranglehold. If you like this video, please don't forget to thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already joined our little group. Please also consider liking this video and sharing your thoughts in the comments section down below. Tell me whether you agree or disagree with my thoughts on Stranglehold. This is Sparkster1701 saying Pretender Month continues next week, so catch you all later.